with just the click of a button, we are able to remove a person's background, even with fairly wispy hair and details, and take that photo and place them on an entirely different background. Uh, my name is Matt Klaskowski, and what we're gonna do is talk a little bit about the June 2025 update for Photoshop. Adobe's given us a pretty substantial little kind of mid-cycle update here. Uh, amongst some of the changes are gonna be your select subject, remove background tools, uh, work really, really good, but there's also some camera raw updates for noise reduction and removing your distractions. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now I've got Photoshop 2025 open. You'll wanna make sure you're using the latest version, which is 26.8.0 or later. This is as of June, 2025, and Adobe is always a place to go to get your updates and answer any questions on that. But when it comes to using the updates, we're gonna concentrate on select subject and remove background for the first part of the tutorial here. I'll do it in the contextual taskbar. Go to the window menu, you can scroll down, there's that little contextual taskbar. So this is generally where I'm gonna be using these features. Um, first thing I would say is, let's make sure we're using the cloud version, meaning there, there's an option to use cloud or the device, okay? We want select subject, but we want it using the best version of it that there is. Best thing you can do, head to your Photoshop preferences, uh, Photoshop menu on a Mac, edit menu on a PC, go to settings and go down here to, I believe it is, where is it, image processing? There we go. Under the image processing tab, you'll see select subject, remove background, and it says cloud. Okay, we wanna make sure we have cloud turned on. That's gonna be the best version of what we can do here. So in this case, uh, let's say, you know, there's ways to remove the people. In fact, Adobe, uh, you know, if you're using the object selection tool, you can even go in here and you can select the people. Um, you can go in and remove people. You can do all kinds of different things. But let's say, let's say we, we just flat out don't wanna go through the work of removing the people. Somebody tells us, or we decide, I want, I want there, I want her on a totally different background. That's where we would use select subject in Photoshop. If I just wanted to make her brighter or darker or change the skin color, whatever it happens to be, I would do that in Camera Raw or Lightroom because we have a select subject inside there. But it won't allow me to do anything layer related like changing out a background. So that's why we need Photoshop. So select subject's been around. It's really, really good. We just click on it and you'll see it's gonna go in there and put a selection around her, okay? So, and I don't even need to have the object selection tool selected for that. But it's gonna go in there and put a selection around her. It did grab the woman in the background here. We'll talk about that in just a second. But that would be how to select your subject. And at this point, I could go edit, copy. I could go drag over to a different photo and I could paste it in and then just grab my eraser tool and erase her away. So that would be one way to do this, but I'm gonna show you what, what I think would be a better workflow for this. And it's using a newer feature, which is remove background, okay? Because that's really what you wanna do. You don't really wanna select her. You wanna get rid of the, you wanna get rid of the background, which is in a way the opposite of select subject. So what we do is we come over here, remove background. Remember, we set the preference so it's using the cloud option and we have to be doing that to get the best technology. So now we've removed the background here, which as you see is exactly the reverse of select subject. It did bring some one woman into the, the photo here. It's treating her as a subject. Remember, it just added a mask to the photo. So all we have to do is take our brush tool and like any mask in Photoshop, you either paint on it with black or white. So in this case, I would paint with black. That makes it go away. If you're not sure to paint on it with black or white, try one. If it doesn't work, try the other one. You got a 50-50 shot of being right the first time. Speaking of a 50-50 chance, you have a 100% chance of getting a very quick word from our sponsor. I gotta pay the bills, but this is a good one. This is something that I think just about everybody can benefit from. Um, back in the last update, which was in the April timeframe, uh, Adobe released these landscape masking segments. Essentially, it's a tool that masks your photo into seven different categories, vegetation, roads, mountains, water and it breaks them up so that we can attack different parts of the photo. It's in Camera Raw and it's also inside a Lightroom. Well, I put together the Scene Split mini course and presets, kind of handle it from two different sections. The mini course, this is such a big 
tool for an outdoor photographer. It's not just landscapes, but this is such a big tool that I, you got to wrap your head around it. And I want to get you through that learning curve so you can incorporate this stuff into your workflow. And then the presets are there for people that want a little bit of a speed up to their process, or maybe just some ideas on some of the things that you can do with there. Because not only do I give you the presets, I also show you how you can go in and modify them to make them your own. So very easy course to get through, very short course to get through, very affordable, and it will take you, it will Will make you it will take you from basically nothing to almost an expert on what I would consider one of the biggest changes to uh, Lightroom and Camera Raw in years. Hope you'll swing by to check it out. Let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so now we have our subject on the background. I could go take my move tool and I can go drag and hover over the other photo that we want to drop her into and then just move into place like so probably crop that a little bit anyway you want to lay it out but with select subject we just this is a quality of of adjustment that we just weren't able to do years ago and, and essentially today we we mostly have it down to uh to just one click okay so that is your select subject and remove background features um, again remove background and having that cloud option is gonna make it a lot better, a lot simpler to uh, to get the job done. The other one here is dynamic text. Uh, this is more for people that do a lot of work with text here. You can see I laid out uh, I laid out some, some words, some text on a layer here inside of Photoshop. One of the problems we had, if we wanted to change it, we were we were fairly restricted in, in how we could change it. We could resize it, we could move it around. But when we go to the type tool, up in the top options bar, you're gonna see a little type icon with a little lightning bolt through it. You click on that, that turns it into dynamic text. Now when I click inside of this, now my text will dynamically change as I move this around. Okay, so for people that do a lot of work with text, for people that do design work, uh, can definitely come in really handy. Don't forget you can still always go in and uh, you can get rid of a space and you can change the way it's gonna look here so you can see just by getting rid of some of those spaces in there. If it's not necessarily behaving the way that you wanted to, you can still change the layout. You can still insert and put line breaks in there to change how this text is gonna look. But just when it comes to laying it out and trying to move it around your photo to generally keep what you have there, it makes the whole process a lot simpler. Now, the rest of our features are in Adobe Camera Raw and I can go in there from the filter for this photo here. We'll just go filter, Camera Raw filter. And we'll head over to the right hand side under the little eraser icon there, there to the distraction removal section. So you might have seen some of these in the uh, in the, the technology previews and betas. So they're just in the full version of Camera Raw now. First, the big one's going to be people. So it's going to try to find any distracting people that are in the photo and it's going to highlight them. Uh, you're welcome to go click on one if you don't want it to be part of it and then just hit the delete key and that will remove that part from it. But when you're ready to go, you just hit remove and Photoshop's going to go through, think for a few seconds there and it's going to use its generative technology to remove these people. Now it's important to know it does not go against your generative credits. When you're using the distraction removal section in Camera Raw, or Lightroom, it doesn't go against your generative fill credits, okay? Now, if it happens to leave a person where you don't want, like it did over here, you can click on it and you can control this. For starters, you can re-click generate and it will regenerate something. And then the other thing is under variations, you can cycle through different variations to try to get the one you want to see if there already is a variation that you wanted. So we can toggle that before and after, but that would be fairly difficult to go in there and try to remove all those people. It's fairly low quality background because it's it's already part of the background. So uh, generative remove is gonna work just fine. If it were a higher quality uh, background, more texture, more detail, more sharpness, you might have a little trouble, but definitely worth giving it a try. So we'll cancel out of there. And then the other one here, we'll go to reflections. And obviously this also works, it used to only work on raw photos, but now it works on non-raw photos. Same thing, go to your little eraser, there's reflections, hit apply. It's gonna go through, remove the reflection from your photo. I try to take for photo, I don't have many photos. I actually had to go take one last Christmas with my cat, but it did a good job of removing that. And essentially a little, uh, there's a little opacity slider. It goes down to zero. The interesting thing is it actually goes the other way 
and can remove your subject from the photo too. So I don't know if or why you'd want that, but having a little opacity, some people like to have a little bit of a reflection, especially if you were doing some type of street photography, you might want a little bit of that effect in there. And then under quality, there's a few options. You know, the lower the quality, the faster it's gonna work. I would say if this photo really matters to you, use best and it can take a little bit longer. And then the last thing, let's go open up a raw file for this one. So you're gonna need some type of a raw or DNG file for this one, but Denoise, which is located inside the detail panel, has been good for a while, okay? So the quality of Denoise hasn't necessarily changed here. What's changed is now when I click on it, I can apply it to the raw photo and it's non-destructive, meaning it's not creating another file for me, which used to be a big pain in the neck for people that were using this feature. So now it does it on the raw photo. It's all non-destructive. If you recall the old way before it created another file, we had to go in and we, we, if we, whatever we decided on this slider, and I usually keep it between 65 and 70 for most of my wildlife, but whatever we decided we were stuck with. So we would have to delete the, the DNG file it created, go back to the raw file, rerun it if we didn't want to. But now this is all non-destructive in here. So, and it does it all on the original raw file. So it's not creating a duplicate. One last little thing when it comes to AI, you're gonna see a new icon on the bottom right-hand corner here. What this is doing is some of the AI tools inside of Lightroom and Photoshop require them to be added in a specific order. So rather than force you to always work in that order, what Adobe's doing here is giving you the opportunity to see when this icon turns color, when it's when it turns yellow, what it's doing is it's giving you the opportunity to see, all right, I used an adaptive profile and that's in the profiles panel, by the way, if you go or the light panel, if you go up to the uh, top of the basics area over here, I use the adaptive color profile on that. So that's an AI profile. What it's telling me is that I just need to update that. The, the AI profile ran itself on a photo. I've since made changes to this photo. So it's telling me to go in there and re-update and it's gonna rerun the adaptive profile on there. So essentially think of it this way. If this icon turns to a different color, it just means Adobe is suggesting that the AI edit status of whatever AI tool that you use needs to be regenerated for that photo. Is it always gonna mess something up? Not always, sometimes it looks just fine, but sometimes it looks just fine. It's just good to know that since there's a new icon there, what that icon does and, and where you would need to watch out for it. Uh, also, I had mentioned my scene split mini course and presets earlier. Uh, if you haven't seen that feature, I've got a free video here that goes over. I do think it is it is one of the biggest changes that we've seen uh, in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom in years. And so if you haven't seen it in action and want a little bit of a introduction to it, this video would be a great place to go to next.